Okay, what I tried to do in the first week, in the first three weeks for that matter, is to try to get a feel as to where you are in terms of knowledge and understanding of some fundamental concepts of management. So everybody here would have done principles of management or introduction to management. So you would have covered the concept of the environment of business. And also, since you did marketing, you also would have done um, this concept. And why I'm emphasizing it, because this concept of the environment of business is fundamental to this course and fundamental to understanding strategic management and the processes of developing business strategies. Right? They're very fundamental. So I will do a quick revision. You're going to look through it, and you're going to help me in this very quick revision. So you have this environment, the internal environment, which in the center, you have the external environment of business. So what tool is generally utilized to analyze this environment of business? How do we analyze this environment of business? You can do a SWOT analysis. What other analysis we can do? A PESEL analysis, which means that what are the factors in PESEL? You have the political and you have the political and legal. What else? Economic, social and cultural, technological. And then some people talk about the environment. So what makes up the competitive environment? The competitive environment is made up of, yes folks, quickly, the, well, we don't call them businesses in a competitive environment, we call them competitors, Suppliers, customers, what else? Sorry? The market would be part of the market made up of the players. So you have your customers, you have your suppliers, right? The competing firms. Who else would have? Your entrance to the market and off the fifth. Off the fifth. Sorry? Sorry? Customers, suppliers, competing firms, new entrance to the market. What's the final one? Sorry? You can Google it. That's won't work. What she said what? So what tool is used to analyze these comp these competitive forces? Right. Porters. Five forces model. So we'll talk about portals very shortly in the revision. And this is a quick revision. So we have the factors in the environment. Let's see if I can get this. So we have the PESL, customers, labor market, conditions, competitors, suppliers, new entrants to the market, substitute products. So the critical thing students must appreciate is how the external environment is constantly impacting, is constantly impacting on the internal environment. So political and legal forces affect businesses, economic forces affect businesses, technology impacts on businesses. Because uh, you can you give me an example how technology impacts on businesses? Right. Or the 
it can help them increase efficiency, but technology could also have another effect. What's the other effect technology could have on businesses? To lay them off to me, what else? It could be have a decrease in level force. No, it increases. Or you mean instead of using it properly, right? That could result in uh, improper use of use of it. But it could also have a negative impact. That if your competitors are able to utilize the technology better than you, it could give them a competitive advantage. It could give them a competitive advantage. Now, I like to give a glossary of words, and there are certain terms in strategy that you really need to know very well. And this concept of competitive advantage is one of those words. It's going to come up over and over again. Competitive advantage or even sustainable competitive advantage. So just what you discuss, if I adequately utilize technology, it could give me a competitive advantage. So these are the factors you can read it up on your own. All of these forces in the environment. So the concept we are saying, organizations need to adapt to the environment. Big, very powerful corporations try to influence the environment. Really can influence decision makers, influence politicians to do things in their favor. But when you do that, what do we call it? When businesses try to influence politicians to do things in their favor, what do we call that? What's that? Bribery, but this word, this goes into um, business government society, corruption, right? Bribery is all part of corruption, unethical practices in business. So how many people here did business government and society? Right, most people would have done it right. So a lot of concepts in business, government, and society we also utilize. So corruption could happen when businesses try to influence the direction inf um, of the kind of influences in the environment. These are stakeholders. Again, you would have dealt with this in marketing. Your unions, the communities, the competitors, government, suppliers, employees. All of these are stakeholders who can positively or negatively impact on an organization. But I want to stress, folks, this concept of the environmental business is going to be weighing heavily as how do you plan? That's what strategy is about. The environment is changing. I have a business. If it is for, if there are positive changes in the environment, I can take advantage of them for my business to grow. If there are negative changes, it could negatively impact on my business. Right, so in the case of Barbados, what kind of environmental forces do you think are playing out right now? Let's hear somebody from here. What kind of forces? My friend here. What's your name? Huh? Yes, Marissa. What forces are playing out in Barbados right now in the Barbados economy? Positive, negative? Mixed. What's your name, Marissa? What's your name? Akin, yes. So deficit, right? Lower foreign direct investment. So how is that going to impact on businesses? Right. What kind of currency? The but we don't call it U.S. in the court. We call it foreign exchange. So the issue with foreign exchange because if foreign exchange becomes too low. It could impact on the central bank's ability for people to provide goods and services because when, com when companies are buying goods and services from overseas, they don't take up cash to pay. They have to go through the central bank and the central bank negotiates a very complex system. So economics can negatively or positively impact. So what if the government resolves the economic issues and foreign exchange is at a high, the economy is booming? Converse would happen, businesses can take advantage of it. How could social and cultural factors negatively impact on a business? Right in the back, my friend here. 
in New York shirt. Can I remember the shirt you wore this morning? Right here, though. <laughs> she forgot she wore a New York shirt. Yes, you did. We have Barbados, I'll say Lucy's shirt next time. <laughs> what? What's the question? How can social and cultural factors impact negatively on a business? So what could be the negative? What about the culture could be a negative? Right, can you give me a practical example? Right. What would be the problem? Rice. <laughs> what about India? What would be the problem with India if a business does not do it? Just not to its background work. Oh. You're going down there selling beef burgers. <laughs> and you're advertising beef burgers for sale. What do you think would happen in India? They won't buy cotton, no. They won't buy cotton in India. Not only riot, they burn out the business. <laughs> Literally. More than riot. <laughs> no. So in India, people are very serious about their religion. So if it's bigger than boycott, you might come and find the business flat in the morning. It's a violation of their religious practices. So you see, but some companies actually export businesses across the world and they don't pay attention to cultural differences. And it happened in Barbados some years ago, actually. Not only, but y'all really, Burger King says a lot of chicken here. Yeah. <laughs> but they, right, they have to, as you said. So Burger King advertises snack boxes like Kentucky and Jafet because Burger King realizes kids are not in Burgers, really. So Burger King and Barbados sells a lot of chicken, right? Um, and then you find, what is the other place in local Barbados? want a chicken bar and sells fish. <laughs> it's a paradox, right? Chicken bar and sells fish. So what are they trying to do? What are they trying to do? Chicken bar and selling fish. Is only expand? You hear it too. So what would Jordan call that in marketing? No, it's only target market. Diversifying your product. To cater to what? What's the word that she would use? To cater to different different segments of the market, which would be divided into by, by what? Divided by <coughs> the segment is then broken down into what has to do this analysis to divide it into segments. Is the word a D word that they use? Demographics, right. You've got demo different demographics, not psychographics. So give me some demographics. Age, gender, religion, race, income, education, pleasure, and religious orientation. Religious, you think people say religion? Yes. So what we do, we segment the market and you try to differentiate your, pro your product or diversify your product and also. So these words will be also used in strategy, diversification, differentiation, market segmentation, right? Um, the concepts of products, the, what we call the intensive strategies, product development, market development, market penetration we use. So if a business goes from, from St. Lucia into Dominica, what, strategy, what marketing strategy is that? From St. Lucia to Dominica, market what? Market development or market penetration? Market development, correct. And market penetration is, my friend here is on the way, right? Hmm? Penetration then is, right, in, in where? Penetration is what? In the same country, same geographical space, I want to get more market share, which is another word. So for all these words we're using, our concepts will be needed in this course. Market penetration, market development, diversification, demographics, right? 
market share, all of those concepts. So it means you've got to take up your marketing books again, folks, and I'm serious and start to refresh your memory very quickly. I don't teach it over. I can't teach it over. So I repeat, folks, please get your marketing books or notes and just refresh your memory so that these basic concepts are known. What we do be a play in the strategy analytical sense. So I don't go through every week. If not, all I would do is teach over 10 courses, and it's impossible to teach over 10 courses. So as I said, I repeat, what I do for the first two to three weeks, we do this kind of revision so I can bring to your attention the foundation that is necessary for you to do well. Right? And I want you, I don't want them lectures that don't like to give away A's, and you know, and students say that the lecture ain't giving A's. If you deserve an A, I give you A. Right? I believe if students work well, they should get a high grade. Right? So I don't have a problem with that. And I like to see students doing well. It reflects on me. Right? The better you do, it reflects on me as a professional, you see. That if so many students fail in and getting very, very low grades, it reflects on me. Maybe I'm not doing what I should do. My job is to help you to do well. I see that as my job. So if every once in a week, sometimes, if I realize a whole set of you sharking off, I come and I complain. So if I complain at any point, and I come in with my face set up, don't get back. You know, that I know you're not pulling your weight, and I come and give you a talk down. So folks, you're all playing the fool. I realize you're all missing tutorials. It's better to miss a lecture, but don't miss your tutorials. Because tutorials will be the interaction where you can come to me, you can ask questions, you can get things clarified. That's what the tutorials are all about, you see. So please, don't, don't start skipping your tutorials. So spend some time going back through this environment of business, particularly the five forces model of Porter. So what does the five forces model assess? What does it assess, the five forces model? If you look at the suppliers, what does it do when you look at suppliers? Yes, who said it? Excellent. The five forces looks at the bargaining power of suppliers. And why is it important to look at bargaining power? Excellent. She says it determines if the supplier has bargaining power, it determines the price that you would pay for the particular supply you are buying. So the cost of that product or the price of that product is going to be determined by bargaining power and as a result it impacts on your operational cost and eventually the cost you're able the price are you're able to sell at the customers so if the bargaining power then is low what's the indication for the company that is buying the bargaining power of the supplier is low what is the indication for the business Sorry? Somebody said something? The bargaining power of the supplier is low. What is the implication for the business wanting to buy the supplies? The guy here is his structure. Bargaining power of the supplier is low. What is the implication for the business? My friend here. Yes, what's your name? Karen? Tyra, yes, Tyra. Is she correct? She said they'd be able to get it at the price they want? Right. You can negotiate price. If the bargaining power is high, so the next question is for somebody from this side, what determines, well, this is just revision, you know. What determines bargaining power? My friend, Ella. What determines bargaining power of the supplier? Yes. 
Yes. You're warm. Yes. The quantity of suppliers or the extent of competitive rivalry among suppliers. I prefer that term. The extent of competitive rivalry among suppliers, meaning if there are a lot of suppliers, it means you have to pay a higher price. If there are little suppliers, you pay the lower price. Y'all listen to me carefully? <laughs> Were y'all didn't say nothing? So if there are a lot of the players, it means that you will get, it means that I can negotiate the best price. And if there are very little suppliers, it means that they can now tell me what I have to pay, especially if it is a product that is rare or critical to my operation. It might not be rare, but it's critical to the product that I produce. And it's difficult for me to import it on my own, so I have to pay the price. But what's the challenge of paying a high price for the product that is essential for your business? What's the challenge of paying a high price? What's the, what's the challenge for the business? Sorry? You have to, but before recovery, sorry? When you're going to the end of the process, what about during the process? Say it again. Excellent. What kind of operating expenses? Variable or fixed cost? Or both? I think you all can do extremely well, you know. I think this group can do you all. I can see a lot of A pluses and A's. <laughs> A I can see a lot of pluses and A's. You're hot. You're real hot. You're <laughs> really bored. When I tell you, I don't take you know, students. I tell everybody to talk stuff. I will tell you stuff. But when I see you good, but you're all for week for day one, for week one, you're all shotting. Excellent stuff. So what's the challenge in operation? Once my supply costs are high, what's the challenge for operation? There are two words that students get mixed up because it's a Caribbean thing. So somebody goes in the store and says, what's, what's the cost of that? <laughs> Let me repeat. We make this mistake all the time. And I see students make this mistake in the exam. How much that cost? I can't tell you my cost. <laughs> cost is cost, price is price. You understand what I'm saying? But say culturally, what's the cost of that? You know, right? How much you fish gets cost? That's a production function. You're interested in price. But we culturally get them mixed up. And I see students bring it into the exam. So I'm telling you up front, folks. In the exam, I can't say, but they already know the difference. In the exam, I, can, I can't assume, I need to say, you don't know the difference, and you lose marks over a simple issue. So the point I'm saying to you folks, students make this mistake every year. The price is what you pay at the front end, at the, at the, the end, the back, at the front end, where a product is now out in the market. The finished product or service is ready to be delivered. That is what you pay for the finished product or the service. The cost is all of the ingredients that are necessary to produce the good or service. The unit costs involved, whether fixed costs or variable costs. And then again, the other term that we use a lot, I understand you don't do it a lot in marketing, but this is something we spend a lot of time on value chain analysis, so I suggest from early folks, we haven't started yet, but please begin to read up on this concept of value chain analysis. It's a fundamental, fundamental concept in business strategy and policy. Very, very fundamental.